Its occurrence is influenced by environmental factors, and so the extent of its contamination varies with geographical location, agricultural and agronomic practices. Aflatoxin is a type of mycotoxin. They are highly toxic chemical poisons which reside in the soil. These deadly toxins affect agricultural products as well as animals and humans through the consumption of contaminated feeds and food. This has severe health and economic implication. You are watching NAFDAQ and Your Health. I am Susan West Braniff. Aflatoxin contamination is prevalent in Africa due to climatic conditions. Our package today will enlighten you on aflatoxins, the efforts of NAFDAQ and other stakeholders to curb its contamination and much more. Do stay with NAFDAQ and your health. Aflatoxins are poisonous chemicals produced by molds known as Aspergillus flavus and Aspergillus parasiticus, which are abundant in warm and humid regions. Aflatoxin is a part of mycotoxin. The broader classification is on mycotoxin. They are toxins derived from mold and the, the molds are mainly Aspergillus species. Uh, you have aflatoxin growing on different kinds of food crops. Right from the farm, you have this problem, especially when the products are not harvested at the right time and, and when they are not stored well. You find mold growing on them. And that is why we advise that storage condition should be maintained a good amb at ambient temperature. Aflatoxin contamination affects feed and food which are consumed by animals and humans. Some of the food crops affected by aflatoxin contamination include cassava, pepper, corn, rice, sesame seed, sorghum, wheat, millet, peanuts and a variety of spices. Milk eggs and meat products can be contaminated by aflatoxins when the livestock consumes aflatoxin contaminated feed. This is invariably transferred to humans by the consumption of these products. Aflatoxin contamination can occur pre-harvest and post-harvest due to improper storage conditions. Aflatoxin contamination has severe health implications. All forms of diseases can arise, it can affect the liver and lead to death. So aflatoxins are toxins that can be injurious to health and it should be avoided. Aflatoxins really are chemicals. They are, I would say, a stubborn set of contaminants because they cannot be easily destroyed. If we are talking of germs, they are living organisms, heat, freezing, so may demobilize or destroy them. But because of are chemicals, it is best to prevent their formation. Because they are chemicals, they cannot easily be destroyed by heat and freezing like you would do for germs. And because they are chemicals also, they have a very wide range of effects on the system, depending on the location of the organ which they attack. Just like GIT diseases, that's a gastrointestinal diseases. Then bloating, cramps, then nervous system failure. Then, of course, when those are prolonged, they cause the lead to death. It's a hidden killer. That is what um, a, a lot of people um, don't know. Um, people sometimes say, oh, um, I, I haven't seen it in my body. It's not something you will see in your body in one day. It's something that accumulates based on consumption of meals that have high level of aflatoxin. And unfortunately for us in this part of the world, we eat quite a lot of, of, of these products that have this level of aflatoxin. Aflatoxin um, increases the level of liver cancer in human beings. 
And aside that as well, it is well known that it causes stunting in children, not just physical stunting, mental as well. Aflatoxins also impact negatively on food products meant for exports and the economy. It is also very good and very important for us to understand the impact that aflatoxin can have on us, on our economy, on trade. Um, what many people don't know is that among many factors, aflatoxin problem was one of the things that killed the granite industry in Nigeria. Um, if you meet with uh, uh, anybody that works in the poultry industry, they will rightly tell you how this impacts negatively on the, on the poultry industry um, in terms of mortality rate of the abort, you know. So if we're thinking of diversifying our economy, I think uh, to agriculture has been key. Um, we have to take the issue of aflatoxin very, very seriously. Aflatoxin are known to have serious implication on the economy because the, when you lose products, you lose revenue, nationally, individually, and corporately. When you, when you estimate the, the, the cost of hospitalizing somebody afflicted by aflatoxins, when you consider the manpower loss, man hours, all those issues, they have a huge economic loss. It's not only aflatoxin, I said it's a broader mycotoxins. Part of mycotoxins, you have aflatoxins in rice. Like now that Nigeria wants to be self-sustained in the production of rice, we need also to control oclatoxins. The economic effect of all this is that we will be producing food that are not uh, of good quality and that will impact on the health of the consumers, as well as even when we plan to export these products, it will be rejected and it's a, it's a great loss. NAVDAC retooled and upgraded its laboratories to international standards and these laboratories which attained ISO 17025 accreditation by the American Association of Laboratory Accreditation include the mycotoxin, pesticide residue, high performance liquid chromatography and food compliance. This is to ensure that food products produced, imported and exported out of the country are of good quality and safe from contaminants, especially aflatoxin. The agency is also collaborating with some research institutions. NAVDAC has been collaborating with other agricultural research institutes on the control of aflatoxins. We have the National Serial, we have the IITA. NAVDAC is also collaborating with Mycotoxicological Society of Nigeria and PACA to educate farmers as well as to train um, other scientists on the control of um, uh, mycotoxins. And NAVDAC has um, a lab for the control of this aflatoxin. And that laboratory, uh, in 2013, got accreditation, ISO 17025, internationally recognized to analyze this uh, product in food. And NAVDAC has been able to sustain that accreditation. For that purpose, even students in university, NAVDAC has been able to be of help to them because many of them, their university do not have what it takes to analyze these uh, toxins. So NAVDAC has an open door that has been made available for these students to come over and get their product analyzed. The International Institute of Tropical Agriculture developed AFLASAFE to mitigate aflatoxin contamination. Aflasib is a bio, biological control uh, product, you know, that was developed by IITA. It is not a chemical. Um, it, is, uh, it is a product that is gotten from uh, a strain, a local strain. Um, what this means is that um, what we currently have is precisely country-specific, meaning that um, the aflasib we are using in Nigeria as of today cannot be used in any other country in Africa because the strain we got, we use in, in developing aflasib is founded locally. IITA and NAVDAC have been collaborating to curb aflatoxin contamination. 
IIT has been collaborating with NAVDAC uh, for the past uh, uh, five, six years now. Um, um, NAVDAC was strongly involved um, in the registration of uh, uh, aflasavers, uh, a bowel control, and the dossier that was used for the registration here uh, through NAVDAC work is what uh, uh, has created a precedent, you know, an example for what uh, other countries and government of other countries has used uh, for registration in their countries as well. Um, aside that, uh, even in building the, um, the plant, the factory that we now use in manufacturing um, our flasif, we went through a lot of guidance you know, with um, NAVDAC as to the process that are required within law for us to be able to have such um, a plant. And this plant now happens to be the first of its kind in Africa, if not in the world. Um, and, and it's now serving um, many other countries as well. We have strongly worked with NAVDAC to create awareness within the country on the issue of aflatoxin. We've done in North Central, we've done in Southeast, we've done in the Southwest. And we also continue you know, with this awareness in, in, in North uh, West as well. Um, awareness has helped a lot to, for farmers to have a better understanding of the approach that has to be taken you know, on, the, uh, on combating this uh, aflatoxin problem. To farmers, manufacturers and exporters, NAVDAC has this advice for you. The practice generally, in fact among our people, especially our farmers, is when you store maize or your cereals, you pile them in bags. And the tendency is those bags that are in the middle, they are the most susceptible to aflatoxin because heat formation is there most. So the advice and the modern, with modern knowledge is when you store your grains, your cereals, store them in a well-ventilated area. That reduces the tendency for aflatoxin development formation in them. Each destination, like each country for instance, has its own standard. Now, when you are exporting to a foreign land abroad, overseas, as it may be, you need to come to NAVDAC. When you come to NAVDAC, with the effort of the government to assist exporters in uh, non-oil growth uh, development, NAVDAC would carry out analysis for you, practically free of charge. Then we will check where you are taking your products to export into, what are the standards in use there. Europe standard is different from US standard. So for every exporter, you must know where you are exporting to and you must be able to know the standards there. And based on the standards there, you should um, produce. Because aflatoxin control starts from the farm, not on the final product. From the farm, you must test your soil as well as monitor the crops, harvest at the right time so that you can have money for your efforts. Aflatoxin contamination can be curbed if everyone, including farmers, manufacturers, exporters, adhere to good agricultural practice, good manufacturing practice, good hygiene practice, and good storage practice as stipulated by NAVDAG. However, everyone should be vigilant to avoid these poisons for health is wealth. Okafo, Okafo, now for you and this your adult education. Every day, there's also book, 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 eh, uncle. Hmm? This one will be anyhow book. Oh. Look, this one, na label instruction. We did the agrochemical whereby to take treat my farm from all this yama yama and disease. Now you can't read like person on go write it. This one pass exam. Oh. This one, na matter of life and death. Ah, yes. Before we use any agrochemical product, make we make sure say we study the instruction well, well. Before we use them, even the one where they take food for beans or maize or any kind of crop, we suppose read the instruction well, well, so that we go no waiting and they come with holding period. With holding period. Yes, that one at time where we say we go wait before we go fit sell the crop or chop them, even get for animal like chicken cow, fish, or even he goats. Man. Yes! We supposed to study the manual so that we go no waiting then they call withdrawal period. 
children of our people. <laughs> that na time where we supposed to allow the animal, make the chemical where they body, come out, finish, before we go catch them. Chop and sell them. See, make I tell you. Person we know the follow instruction. He no fit do exporter importer for this our farm business. Oh. Yes! See, all this Yamayama disease we did everywhere. Like uh, cancer, kidney failure. Now because people know they study the instruction, we they did the container body. Do fear! Country people, make you not use their own hand. Kill yourself. Oh. Make you make sure say you they study the instruction. Where they did any agrochemical product you buy before you use them all. NAFDAC don't ban some agrochemicals where fit cause disease for we body. Make you they use only agrochemicals where NAFDAC don't approve. For more information on the program or any case of faith, substandard or wholesome regulated products, please report to the nearest NAFDAQ office or send an SMS to the following numbers 081-3363-0600 or 081-17410989. You can visit our website on www.nafdaq.gov.ng. Follow us on Facebook at NAFDAQ Nigeria, Twitter at NAFDAQ Agency and watch our videos on YouTube. This is where we draw the curtain on this episode of NAVDAC and your health. Thank you for watching and do keep a date with us same time next week. I am Susan West Branif. Goodbye.